Hello, today we will look at lixacinatide. It is an injectable medicine used to control high blood glucose levels in people with type 2 diabetes. Lixacinatide can be used alone or with other medications depending on the patient needs. And lixacinatide has the trade names of Adluxin in North America and Luxumia in different countries worldwide. And to remember the names of the GLP-1 agonist, the acronym CELL-D makes it very easy. CELL-D is simple to recall as these medicines can be expensive at the moment and S stands for semaglutide, E for exenatide, L for elixacenatide, L for liraglutide and D for dulaglutide. GLP-1 stands for glucagon-like peptide 1. So we have this agonist referring to these agents activating receptors in some special cells called the beta cells in an organ called the pancreas to secrete insulin which further goes into the blood, moves the glucose which is sugar from the blood into the cells. And GLP-1 agonist enhances the secretion of insulin from pancreatic beta cells and stimulates the growth of these cells. And as we know, the problem in diabetes is that the pancreatic beta cells reduce the number until the point where no insulin can be produced anymore. And therefore, GLP-1 agonist must stimulate this growth of these cells. Another mechanism of lixacinatide and other GLP-1 receptor agonists is to decrease the inappropriate glucagon secretion. Let's define glucagon. A glucagon is a molecule just like insulin but works as a counterpart, meaning that glucagon acts oppositely. So instead of moving glucose into the blood cells, it promotes and increases glucose in the blood. So when lixacinatide is in the body, it will decrease the inappropriate secretion of this molecule and therefore the overall effect causes a raised amount of insulin while having a reduced amount of glucagon. And in that sense, we will reduce now glucose in the blood, which is, which is our primary goal in diabetic patients. Lixacinatide has many advantages over other diabetic medications. For instance, it has a very high glycemic efficacy when we compare that to the others. Glycemic, glycemic efficacy just means how good the medicine is at lowering blood glucose levels. The second benefit of uh, lixacinatide is that it improves insulin sensitivity. As mentioned before, it enhances the secretion of insulin from pancreatic beta cells and stimulates the growth of these insulin producing cells. So it increases your body's insulin sensitivity as the overall effect causes a raised amount of insulin while having a reduced amount of glucagon, which is immensely beneficial in diabetic patients. The third benefit is that lixacinatide is more tolerable than other GLP-1 agonists. A drawback, uh, I would say, of GLP-1 agonists is that some patients experience gastrointestinal side effects. However, lixacinatide has fewer, uh, fewer patients experience gastrointestinal side effects with this medication. Next benefit is the administration. It is straightforward uh, because it can be taken daily within one hour before the first meal. However, lixacinatide has some other disadvantage here that it is expensive, but hopefully it will be cheaper and cheaper with time since GLP-1 agonists are proven superior to many other diabetic medications. The next drawback is that some patients prefer oral medicines, but lixacinatide is only available as an injection pen. Okay? Another disadvantage is that some patients experience gastrointestinal side effects, although, as we said, they are less than the other GLP-1 agonists. Before we give lixacinatide, par parameters such as your weight, glucose levels in the blood, and hemoglobin A1c have to be checked. Hemoglobin is the molecule that transports oxygen in your body and hemoglobin A1c refers to the glycated part, meaning the sugar attached to this hemoglobin and this sugar attachment usually happens when glucose is very high in the body for an extended time. So therefore, the blood level measurement will show that this patient has chronically very high levels. Notably, this result is not only at the time of the hemoglobin A1c measurement, but for a long duration, such as three months or more. We also need to exclude the contraindications before starting a medication. The contraindications are conditions that can make taking this medicine inadvisable because it would rather be harmful to the patient. In simpler terms, some things have to be ruled out before starting the medication to know if it will do more harm than good. Okay, one contraindication of lixacinatide is hypersensitivity to the medication. Has the patient taken lixacinatide before and had an allergy to it? If yes, the patient should never use lixacinatide again. For the next contraindication, the details of the patient's medical history are essential. We ask if the patient has a personal history or family history of pancreatitis. Uh, and a personal history means did the patient have pancreatitis in his, in his life? 
and a family history of pancreatitis uh, would then refer to if some of his family members had such an illness. And if yes, then please, lixacinatid is not advised. The next contraindication is whether the patient is pregnant or breastfeeding. And if so, then lixacinatid is not advised. However, it can be used, but will require careful monitoring by the doctor who prescribed it. Last contraindication is gastroparesis, which means the patient is having difficulty digesting food. And one of the effects of GLP-1 receptor agonists is to slow down gastric emptying. And if the patient already has difficulty digesting and it is slowed down even further, that can be dangerous. And if that is the case, then lixacinatid is not advised. So lixacinatid is administered now with a pre-filled pen, similar to that of insulin or dulaglutid. The injection pen comes in two distinct colors, so you can easily differentiate the dosages. Usually the green pre-filled pen has 10 micrograms per dose, while the purple pre-filled pen has 20 micrograms per dose. And we administer lixacinatid once daily, usually during an hour before you eat your first meal. And the meal could be breakfast or dinner, but it is easier for most patients to remember to use uh, lixacinatid before breakfast. So they even set an alarm or notification on their phones for it in the morning, for example, or have a family member remind them to take it. Uh, remember that although you can choose which meal to inject before, you should use lixacinatid before the same meal on each day. So you will start on a dose of 10 micrograms daily for two weeks, then the dose is increased to 20 micrograms daily, and that means you will use the green pre-filled pen in the first two weeks, and then after you will use the purple pre-filled pen, and in case you forget to use lixacinatid before your usual meal, if, for instance, if you miss it before breakfast, do not inject it after you have eaten. Instead, use it before your next meal, and it is best to store your unopened packs of lixacinatid in the refrigerator, but do not freeze lixacinatid. It can be kept for 14 days at room temperature, but keep it away from direct heat and sunlight. So now let's look at how to inject yourself with lixacinatid, which uh, we know has trade names of adluxin and luxumia. The first step is to dissect an injection site, whether the upper arm, thigh or abdomen. Disinfect the skin and remember to rotate injection site for any following injections. The second step is to take the cap off the mount uh, and mount the needle. The third step is to remove the cover and you are ready to use the injector pen. And don't try to cover it again, otherwise it will damage the needle. The fourth step is to prime the pen before using it. Priming is only done the first time you use a new injector pen and start by pulling the button up, then turn the pen with the needle pointing upwards and gently tap it. Push the injector button for a few drops to come out, ensuring no air bubbles in the syringe and the solution should appear clear and colorless. And as you are using the pen for the first time, the activation window will indicate the uh, on the device if it has been activated by changing the color from orange to white. After priming, there would usually be 14 doses of lixacinatid remaining in it. And the fifth step is now to press and hold the injector pen, making a subcutaneous injection. And when you inject it, please keep the needle in your skin for 10 seconds before releasing it. The last step is to remove the injector pen from your skin and safely dispose the needle. Okay, while taking lixacinatid, Lixacinatid, we must regularly check your blood glucose levels, hemoglobin A1c about every six months or so, and uh, if they are stable and are meeting the treatment goals. However, uh, we can review it more regularly, such as every three months in patients who are not meeting the treatment goals. So far, now we have discussed general information on lixacinatid, we have uh, discussed the uses, what to check before giving the medication, steps on how to administer it, and the dosage of lixacinatid. Now we will discuss the side effects. Possible side effects include gastrointestinal side effects, as we said, such as nausea, vomiting, constipation, diarrhea, flatulence, abdominal pain, and these are the most common side effects, all kinds of abdominal discomfort. Let's have a quick summary now. Lixacinatid is a GLP-1 agonist along with semaglutid, exacinatid, lixacinatid, liraglutid, and dulaglutid. And remember the acronym of CELD for GLP-1 agonist. The trade names of lixacinatid are adluxin and luxumia. Lixacinatid is used as a medication in diabetes mellitus type 2 and can be used alone or in addition 
with another medicine. The recommended starting dose of lixacinatid is 10 micrograms once daily for 14 days, then a subsequent increase to 20 micrograms once daily, and lixacinatid's benefits are high glycemic efficacy compared with other ones, which means it is good at lowering blood glucose levels and improving insulin sensitivity. Another benefit was that lixacinatid is easy to administer. Uh, additionally, we have uh, better tolerance uh, than the other GLP-1 agonists, and so on. I think that's enough. Thank you very much for listening and take care. Bye-bye.